you know who Andy Alfon is? Uh, yeah, he's one of my very, very good oh, friends. Yeah, Andy's Andy's awesome. So Dude, Andy, that's so funny because I every time I see you, Miles, I feel like you could be in the Oliphant family, like just by your like you look. <laughs> The way you talk and the way you look, I'm like, God, he reminds me of Andy so much. I'm so oh, weird. No That's kidding. weird that you brought it up and I didn't. Cause <laughs> oh, wow. Andy's, so I've known, yeah, he's the best. I've known Andy since he was the very first A&R guy that gave a, a, gave a damn about anything I was a part of. It was Mayfield four. He came, he flew to Spokane. Oh, shit. Yeah, in 2006, yeah, in, I think it was in 2006 or 2000, early 2000, and I, and I'm sorry, 1996. That's how long, okay. going way back, way, way back. Yeah, because I was going to say, I thought the Mayfield 4 was, uh, yeah, yeah. was a little yeah. earlier than that. But. That was earlier. Yeah. So he was the very first guy, I'll never forget, we, he, he gets here and we go like have pancakes somewhere and I'm like, this is like, this is great. We're talking to like a real a &R guy. And we kind of, actually, I'm going to reach out to him because I haven't talked to him in a while, but we... I, if I remember correctly, I think we went to the Rockstar premiere. I think I, I think I might have. Well, his gone. brother was in the movie. His Timothy's, in the movie. It, it yeah. plays the the guitar player of Mark's uh, Marky Mark's original band. Marky original Mark. band. I'm always going to say Marky Mark. I cannot say Mark Wahlberg anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> I just, uh, it's it's. I know it's, he's beyond that at this point, probably in his career. But I still, I just, it's just funny I'd, to me. I, I, I'm I, a I huge know. fan, but like, anyways. I digress. <laughs> yeah, Timothy. Uh, Timothy Oliphant is great too. I'm sure you guys. Uh, He's great. Met on that set as well. Yeah, uh, I've, I've only had the pleasure of talking with Timothy a couple of times too. But yeah, Andy was the guy. It's funny we have a similar story. He was the guy at Warner that came out and saw us on Warp Tour for the first time, and then brought out Craig Aronson and Tom Wally to the next show. And he, he was the one that saw us first and was like, "We got to get this band." Blah blah blah. And he was the one really championing us to to come over to Warner Brothers. That's cool. How that's that's wild. That is. <laughs> yeah, he's he's great. In fact, I, I I don't know if I ever told this story either. So I I think I rode with him to the premiere of Rockstar. Rad. Big Hollywood thing, right? And I'm this kid from Spokane, and the mag. And once again, the magnitude of all of this. I'm like, I'm kind of a wall. I'm not really hardwired for a lot of that stuff. So he we he pulls up, and I think he's like, okay, there's like the red carpet. You know, with all the people and the red carpet, and he's like, "Okay, it's your time. You know, you're in the movie. Go, go, do your thing." I, I'm pretty sure this is how it played out. And me being me, what did I do? I went behind. I went behind all the photographers and just like <laughs> docked the whole red carpet because <laughs> I'm just like, I can't do this. Get is do like it, setting it. my social anxiety off into a tizzy. I'm get, just get me into the theater. <laughs> I love that. And this is, and this, this kind of answers the earlier question why we haven't seen Miles in a movie since. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. I ran for the hills. Yeah. I was like, I mean, it was, it's cool. It's amazing, but it's just a whole different scene. And, and it's, and it, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy being a musician. I just yeah. want to rock. You just want to rock. Yeah. And you don't want to wake up that early, obviously. No. No. But let's get back. I'm going to come back to the Mayfield Four and uh, and Andy Oliphant in a second. But this seems like a good time to get back to that uh, the the set of Rockstar story. Um, you were mentioning before to me uh, that there was there was a moment where you were like going to be there was like a, a body double or something along the line it had so, had something to do with a body double with Mark with Mark Wahlberg. I almost said Marky Mark again, and. Uh, and then there was another celebrity that walked by at one point. Can you, yeah. tell, can you tell me that story again a little bit? Yeah. So I think I know which story, story you're talking about. So we'd finished. So <clears throat> the scenes, it was like, it was shot over three days for my part. And the first day, if I remember correctly, they brought in like a few actual bands. Like I th well, maybe Wasp was there. There were like some, some bands that would draw a lot of that like rock and roll crowd so they so, so they could the cameras, film in the in the arena and stuff yeah, like that yeah gotcha. exactly so they could have the, the people in there and so we were shooting these scenes i'm dressed with the wig and the, the outfit and all that um and we get done and i'm heading back to my trailer and <clears throat> i felt like an idiot I'm, I'm not going to lie. I just did. I just didn't feel c comfortable for some reason at, at that moment, just wearing this outfit. It, it took me a while. Cause that was day one. That was day one of the shoot. By the end yeah, of it, I you was have your shirt off the streets. Yeah. Yeah. And you had your shirt off under your, 
you're emulating Mark Wahlberg's character in the thing, and ob- obviously what Mark Wahlberg is ridiculously jacked, even to this jacked. day. He is oh, yeah. ridiculously good. And you're like, and I think you were talking about how you felt a little incompetent in the same outfit. Oh, yeah. incompetent is <laughs> an understatement. Because when, we, when I read for the part, I was like, okay, so do you want me to, to attempt... Because Mark Wahlberg is known for being very healthy, and at, th- at that period, I was kind of still in the middle of my party phase. Mm-hmm. I discovered the, the the magic powers of of, of coconut beer, and, and so, <laughs> so I was yes. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, exactly. So I'm the, I'm kind of the skinny, like no muscle definition thing, and then I've got I've got like this little beer gut going and i'm like well obviously i'm going to want to lose that for the part because you know i'm trying to emulate mark and they're like no no we're going to talk to mark and try and because it's more rock, we want him to be more, a little more like tone tone that down to be a little more rock and roll or whatever I'm like okay so do i change then they're like nope you just keep doing what you're doing i'm like great <laughs> pass me another kokanee yeah you know? there you go <laughs> and, and, and so so i show up to the set when we started shooting and i and he comes out of the trailer and i'm just like he's he's just ripped and i'm like and i look down and i'm like oh man so yeah there's this you can see it there's one scene where we're both going for this high note and we both kind of lean back yeah, right yeah 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 <laughs> the long note and everything and our coats both kind of go back and he's just this chiseled you know perfect specimen and then my coat comes back and you kind of just see you can set a drink on it (laughs) (laughs) i love that i gotta go back and watch this for that scene alone i've i grew up loving this movie by the way or not even like it's it's a staple man i it has a good story right too in it like it does it's not ripper ripper on yeah Yeah. and yeah and, and uh and some amazing, uh, mu- I mean, I don't know who the, who was the music director on this? Because I mean, it, it was a, it was really well done musically too, yeah. to come up with those originals, original songs in there too, that really fit the era if that, that they were yeah. going for. Yeah. There were a lot of really good tracks that were perfect for that. I think, um, I think the song that we sang, the stand up and shout song, if I'm not mistaken, was written by, I think it was Sammy Hagar. Um, I think wrote, that, wrote that track and, uh, yeah, the the, uh, the the gentleman who was um, in Steelheart, great singer. Um, he was, I know he was involved. Um, Jeff mm-hmm. Scott Soto was involved with doing like a lot of the uh, the vocals. I think he did a fair amount of vocals for some of the other actors. And yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a a, a real. F- I'm with you. I mean, it was, that was a fun that the '80s. That was a fun time, and mm-hmm. I felt like they did a good job of 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 touching on the spirit of all of that. Um, and and yeah it was something that and also i had no idea that it was going to have the staying power because when it was released it was right on the heels of or right before it was right around 9 11 when that happened so was obviously yeah, that's a, yeah, that. yeah that's a buzzkill right there so you're kind of like well that's you know out of respect for everything that was going on in the world at the time a, a party movie about you know 80s rock is not going to probably you, know, you just you assume that's it and yeah. fast forward 20 years later and it's gradually kind of you know made it's made the rounds and and uh people seem to find certain they joy still in find it. it and they're still finding the movie you know now with streaming yeah. services and stuff and i know yeah before even streaming services it was, I, I would catch it on mtv2 or vh vh1 well you know when they right. started to make their trend started making their transition into completely negating music um right. on, on, on those channels there they were still playing like the, the some movies that were music r- related and right rockstar was one of them that i got to imagine I, I mean the residuals on that for whoever gets paid on those got got to be looking pretty these days not me <laughs> 